Owen here with Seek Outside, so today I'm gonna to be going over how to seam seal your tent. Okay, since so most people don't have a space to do it inside, we're gonna do this outside, obviously. Um, so, uh, first of all, you wanna have a nice level surface to pitch your tent on. You wanna get a nice tight pitch on it so that the seams are stretched out. And then you also don't want it to be super windy. Today I have some breeze, uh, which isn't ideal, but we're gonna work with it anyways. Some things we're gonna need for this job it's gonna be a tube of seam grip plus sill. That's what we found works best and that's what we do all our factory seam sealing with. And a brush. I like to use a brush. You don't have to, I'll show you both methods. Okay, so just some quick terminology. This is the seam. Um, this has stitching in it and that's why we're gonna seal it up. Um, this up here is a cone. Um, so every tent we sell is gonna have a cone. Uh, which with has stitching in it, and it's also going to have a seam. Um, so these are all gonna be need to be sealed up. Now getting into this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down a small bead of the seam sealer. I'm gonna run right here, get some amount on there. Um, run it short at first if you're inexperienced. And we're gonna take that brush, we're gonna run that brush, and we're gonna get a bead build up there. And it's gonna cover that what we're looking for is for this to cover both of these um, stitching lines right here. And we're already off to a great start. Another method we can use instead of using a brush is using our own fingers. Um, it's a very messy process and I'm not going to run super in depth right now on it as I don't have any paper towels or anything to clean off my hand. Um, but you can basically tension this, run a little bead and use your finger to spread that out. Um, it is definitely not my favorite process. In fact, I'd probably recommend against it, but if you have no access to a brush or anything, then this is probably gonna be your best bet. Okay, now just for some in-depth. Um, over here is what I'm talking about by getting a nice bead. Now I'm gonna show you how I kind of apply it real quick. Um, you're just gonna run this down through here, get a nice small amount rolling. And then you're gonna take this brush and you're gonna decent pressure, push down. Just make sure both of those stitching lines are covered up. So I'll go over a few times. Just take your time when you first get it. Um, you obviously don't want it to look bad for the lifetime of the tent. Now that we've gone over how to seam seal the seams for the most part, I wanna talk about the cone up here. The cone can also get leakage um, as it does have holes from stitching. Um, so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go over that. Um, it's gonna look for the most part, the same on all of our tents. Okay, so here we have the cone. As you can see, there's gonna be lines that run here, around the label, there, and all the way around the circle of the cone. So we're gonna go ahead and seal those up. Um, same process as the seam. Um, we're gonna apply a light amount, like that. And we're just gonna run our brush, make sure it gets on that seam, seals everything up. And always just take your time. Um, seam seal is extremely hard, if not impossible to get off once you've, uh, once you've gotten it on there and let it dry. So if you, if you plan on using this thing for a couple years uh, or more, uh, make sure to keep it pretty. And there you go, that's kind of the method and just follow that all the way around. There are also gonna be times that you're gonna run into something like this. Um, in this occasion, it's for the toggle to hold the door back. Um, on some of our tents, it is used as a guy out point. So um, when we come down and do that, right, we're passing by on our seam. This can be a high point of leakage on a lot of tents um, as it's sewn into that seam and can wick a lot of moisture. So we have our seam like this. We've gotten both, both of those. Now, what I like to do is just get a little bit, put it on the brush and go over 
the top of that and then pull it up and kind of shove it underneath it like that. And just so you have a really good seal there. Another thing you're going to encounter is our guy out points on these tents. Um, these can also be a point of leakage um, as there's a lot of stitching around here. Um, so I will show you how to do that right now. Um, what I like to do Okay, so here's another thing you're gonna run into on our tents. This is a guy out point. Um, it has a triangular uh, stitching shape around here and this can sometimes wick moisture. Um, so as you're going down, these aren't on usually every seam, but on some. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is I like to pull the tent, get nice and strong right there. Um, so there's some tension to push on. And then you're going to run this around that triangle. The goal is to get both on the sill nylon and on the triangle itself. So you are going to kind of overlap, right? So there's a bar tack right there. We're gonna get that. We're gonna try and overlap onto the tent so we have the, the best ceiling we can, right? Like that. And then we're gonna feed into our other seam. And then what we're gonna do is once we're done with that triangle, I think that looks plenty good for me right now. You're gonna dab a little bit under here and you are going to push this in into the, the bottom of this to get a nice seal. So once you've done that, then just follow your seam like you've been doing. We also have on some of our tents, a stove jack. It is optional on some. Um, anyways, this can be a big point of leakage as well. So I kind of want to go over on how to seam seal this. There's going to be a black outing with stitching on it that goes around the entire stove jack. Um, for some tents, this may vary, but where there's stitching is, where the, where the stove jack is stitched on is where we're going to want to seal. What I like to do is generally go around twice on these as these can be one of the biggest leakage points. So I'll go around here. Um, the reason for doing it twice is that it can soak into this black material. Um, so I'll let it dry into it for maybe five minutes and then come back to it. So up in spots where water might get trapped, um, like up here, as you see, it could fall into there. I like to put a little bit more seam sealer um, just on the outside, similar to, we did to the thing we did with the triangles, the guy out points. So I'll just run a little bead on top of here. Kind of push it into that top right there. It's not something you necessarily have to do on the sides of this or on the bottom. You can for extra insurance. Um, I mostly just like to do it where water is likely going to be kind of getting hung up in the rain. Now that you've seam sealed your, your tent by now, hopefully, uh, I have a few quick tips to share with you. Number one, you don't need to do the seam by a zippered door. Um, this is because the zipper is going to soak up anything and basically, basically it's pointless. Um, do not do your stakeout loops. Uh, that's also another thing that's just a waste of seam seal. It's gonna be a pointless process as it's already on the ground. Um, and then I have just a few more in-depth tips and tricks and then we're done. Eventually your tube of seam sealer is gonna start looking like a used uh, piece of toothpaste. Take the cap, the provided cap with it, and just put this on and squeeze all of that stuff up towards the top. This is gonna use your seam seal more efficiently and it's also gonna make less of a messy process. You're also gonna get a consistent bead. Another thing is um, just always keep your tent clean when you're gonna do this process. Dust and dirt and debris and everything 
can get in the seam and get stuck there. Um, so either if it's an older tent, just go ahead and clean it before you do this process. Um, it's gonna help it stick better. It's gonna provide a longer lasting seam seal. Um, and if it's a new tent, go ahead and do it when you get it. It's gonna keep the seam seal process lasting longer. Okay, as you see, I've uh, accidentally had a little mishap and gotten a little seam seal on my tent. I found the best way to get it off is with the oils of your hands. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just rub that off right now. You can also use a piece of uh, paper or a cloth or something to try and get that off, but I've honestly found that your hands work the best. Um, usually this staining and everything will kind of go away once the tent gets dirty once. So I'm gonna grab this, get a good tension. And just try and rub that all off. As you see, it's doing a pretty good job. You can hardly tell it was there. I hope you guys learned some valuable information about seam seal in your tent. Um, this goes for most tents, but um, this is just specifically with ours. So um, if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and like us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.